Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about function minimization in MATLAB, or in other words, optimization. So uh, the the main function that we'll be using today is this thing called fminsearch, right? And we'll go through the syntaxes and how to use this in MATLAB. The the function that I'm really going to focus on is y equals x squared. It's it's nice and simple thing. So as an example, it's really good for you to learn. So you know you know that the minimum point for y equals x squared happens when x equals zero, right? Um, so so yeah, so let's go through this. So the first thing I'll do is plot how it goes. All right, so that's your, uh, that's the parabola. So y equals x squared. So as you can see, the minimum is at zero. All right, so I'll, I'll get rid of this. Uh, now, the syntax for f min search, right? I have this function called parabola, which is what I'm trying to minimize. So if I show you what it is, what it looks like, simply y equals x squared, um, uh, nothing much to it. You, what you need to do is this is this part where you go at in brackets x so it tells MATLAB I'm optimizing over x and then I give it a starting point called 20 now obviously it's nowhere near the um, minimum of, of 0 but uh, just to show you that MATLAB can uh, do this uh, let's just run this so when I do this there you go f min search at x it will give you 0 Okay, uh, now the next thing that I'm going to do is is um, sometimes we, we want to send in more than just one parameter to whatever function we're optimizing for. For example, uh, this parabola 2 function that I've written, it's y equals ax squared plus b. So ax squared plus b. Now, if you, if you remember your algebra, it's doing this isn't going to change the minimum the plus b will shift everything by by amount of b and a will multiply everything by amount a so it's 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 this a will just pull everything up right and b will shift everything up so the minimum point hasn't changed now there's one point that i that i forgot to mention and that's that's why I have why I have I put this dot over there instead of ax squared right the reason is MATLAB sends multiple values of x at the same time. So it's not just one value, it'll send multiple values of x so, th so that it doesn't have to do too many function evaluations, right? Now, if you've got a really complicated thing and you can't do this dot and then uh, whatever it is going to be, right? What I suggest you do is you go for a for loop, i equals one to length of x and then say your output y is equal to function of x of i. So sorry, it should say y of i is equal to f x of i. So this way, for it doesn't matter how many x's it sends in, it'll always have a vector of of uh, of our outputs. All right. So so that's the way to do that. Of course, don't forget to put end. All right. So that's not what we're after here. Um, but just in case you ever need to use that kind of thing. So let's use this. So going back to my main function. So as you can see, I'm only optimizing over x, and the rest of it, MATLAB treats as constants. All right. So stepping through this, I will get again zero, as 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 expected, right? All right. The next thing. Suppose we know what the gradient looks like. So for for most functions that we're dealing with, we we, we tend to know the gradient. If you, if you don't, uh, MATLAB will always treat it as a discrete gradient. So for example, if for all the x's that it inputs, it'll calculate the differences and it'll take, uh, take that as a proxy to the gradient. And that's a, that's a bit slow method of doing things, but if you know the exact uh, derivative, right? So the first differentiation, then you can just send that into MATLAB, give that information to MATLAB, and it'll, it'll make the optimizing my session a bit faster. Right, so that's what I said done with same thread object on. Okay, so this is just options setting options. Uh, so I know the gradient, so I will set grad object to on. All right, the the next option that I want to focus on is this max iteration and max function evaluation. So the way that I understand the max iteration is the number of x's that it send, sends in each each amount of time. Right, so each to my parabola function 
it'll send in, uh, in this case, a thousand x's, right, in one go. The maximum function evaluations is the, 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 the number of times it will call this function, it will call this maximum, uh, this function at maximum of 50 times, all right? In this case, it will call it 50 times at, at most. Uh, diagnostic on and display together, uh, display iter iteration, sorry, uh, shows shows you uh, some some sort of output so you can see what's going on with the with the with the evaluations right so it'll, it'll tell you what the function values is anyway we'll see that soon and the last thing this tall tall fun so this tells you this is a stopping criteria so if I optimize my value to and it doesn't change by much and in this case it doesn't change by 10 to the power of minus 10 so my uh, current function evaluation evaluation and the next function evaluation only gives me uh, 10 to the power of minus 10, I leave it. So I, I say, okay, I'm done. And MATLAB just starts with the value, right? So you need to use this function optim set. All right, so you can, I'll, I'll leave this, I'll leave this uh, function, uh, this uh, file down down on the comment section uh, and you can just uh, copy, copy this part, right? So, okay, let's, okay, so ops, equals optim set and that will take it and into my fpin search i'm going to give it give this options right so let, let's see, let's see what happens now all right so it has all the the function counts right and as you can see the function it starts up at 400 and starts to decrease so 324 196 36 4 and then gets to zero okay Re remember this time i'm, I'm, I'm uh, minimizing the function just parabola not parabola 2 where i had ax squared uh oh yeah and i forgot to mention the gradient so in this function when uh so i've called this parabola underscore g oops so this should be called parabola underscore g right uh the second so I need I need two outputs. The first output is y equals x squared. The second output is the gradient. So if it's x squared, the gradient is two x, right? So so you need those those two. Just remember, it's always a second output that is the gradient. Not the the first has to be the actual function. All right. So over here again, as usual, I'm optimizing over x, and I'm optimizing the function y equals x squared. Right, and it's, this time it's going to use the gradient because I set grad object to on. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is fmin con. Now it's similar to what we've been using with fmin search, except it has constraints in here. Right, so constraints can be what values does x vary between, right? So, um, or it could be you could have some sort of uh, thing that goes something like this, where it goes a times x has to be less than a certain value b, right? So you can have you can ho have a whole bunch of uh, constraints, but uh, what I'm going to focus on is uh, what x can vary between, right? So in this case, I'm again using parabola g, right? So the one with the gradient, and I'm I'm restricting it to between three and five. So I'm restricting my function to be between three and five. Uh, and then once I so so if it's between three and five, you should expect the value three to be your minimum, right? All right. So let's run this. So the last part, right? So there you go. It's the optimum value is three. All right. So you have your function evaluations, and so it starts off from sixteen, right? I'll, I forgot to tell you one thing. So the um, starting point I, I said said to be four this time. There's no point saying it to twenty because it's outside my range, right? So it's between three and five that I'm optimizing. I said to four. Now, if you're wondering what what these things are, right? What these empty brackets are? Um, they are the the other ones that I mentioned before, where I said a x is less than b. Um, you can have other constraints in there. So all of these things are other constraints in which, like for this particular uh, particular question I don't have those constraints so I just left them to be empty so so I have four empty brackets and then my 
lower bound, my upper bound. Uh, the, this empty bracket is for nonlinear constraints, right? So you don't you don't need to remember these ones. Just look up, uh, just just type up help fmin uh, fmin con, and it'll give you what these things are. So f help fmin con, it'll tell you what all those uh, things in the middle are. Okay, so they they're all over here. So ax has to be less than less than or equal to b, and so on. So you just need to choose which ones to leave out empty and which ones not to. Right? And that depends on that really depends on your problem. Okay, it, it, this um, this constraint helps most of the time when you have a function that has to run for too long, right? And you got some idea of where the minimum is going to happen. So that's that's really going to be useful uh, to have. Uh, okay, so I guess I guess we're done uh, with that. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or comments, please let me know. Uh, just leave them down below. And uh, thank you.